On the last part, Piccolo, empowered by the fusion with every Namekian warrior, effortlessly sidesteps Demon's attempts at elimination. With his newfound strength, he confronted Enilaza single-handedly and effortlessly overpowering the colossal titan. As usual, God Topo falls to the might of Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, leaving Jiren as the final obstacle to Universe 7's victory. The battle against Jiren was a grueling test of endurance, with Piccolo bravely enduring the brunt of Jiren's relentless assaults. Supported by Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Goten and Trunks, Piccolo manages to gain ground in their struggle against Jiren. Yet, Jiren's formidable power proved to be a formidable obstacle, necessitating the combined efforts of Ultra Instinct Omen Goku and Piccolo's power awakened form to overcome Jiren. Following the Tournament of Power, the Dragon Ball Super Broly saga is sidelined as Frieza remains trapped in the other world. As we now delve into the moral arc, Earth finds itself without the presence of Fat Boo or Wu. How will the events of the moral arc be influenced by these significant absences? Well, these are questions we will answer today on Dragon Ball Super. In a world without Fat Bull and the Dai Kaishin slumbering within him, the Galactic Patrol would never have found cause to visit Earth. Goku and Vegeta would have continued their training as usual, blissfully unaware of Moro's existence. Without Goku, Vegeta and Fat Bull to play their roles in the Moro arc, events take a drastically different turn. Following Moro's escape from prison, Mira swiftly makes his way to the land of the Supreme Kais. This sacred realm, inaccessible to most mortals, poses no obstacle to Mirus, who reveals his true identity as an angel in disguise. Mirus wastes no time in revealing his true identity to Shin and Kibito, shedding his guise as he explains his purpose. He discloses his mission to release Majin Buu, a task that understandably fills Shin and Kibito with apprehension. After all, they are faced with the prospect of unleashing one of the most formidable entities in the entire universe. Despite their reservations, Mirus employs all his persuasive skills to sway them to his cause. With great reluctance, Shin and Kibito concede to Mirus's request, albeit with a heavy heart. Mirus, well prepared for the task at hand, administers a potent energy injection into Majin Buu's dormant form. As the ancient being stirs from its slumber, Shin and Kibito retreat to a safe distance, their trepidation palpable. Using the same net that he used against Moro in the manga's version of the Moro arc, Mirus swiftly ensnares Boo with this net, leaving no room for escape. Despite Boo's valiant efforts to break free, Mirus' preparations prove impenetrable. With a nod of gratitude towards the Supreme Kais, Mirus takes his leave, leaving Shin and Kibito to anxiously hope for the best now that Majin Buu roams free once more. The following week is dedicated to rehabilitating Buu, a task that proves challenging given the lingering presence of his bad side. In this version of events, Buu's good and evil halves are still combined into one. However, it is precisely because of this balance that Buu retains his divine powers and the ability to execute the potent Kai Kai Mutaru technique. In the manga, the Grand Supreme Kai had stated that Buu's magical abilities lied with Buu's evil self. Meanwhile, Moro had set his sights on new Namek, embarking on his quest for the Namekian Dragon Balls. Without the initial confrontation between Goku, Vegeta and Moro, the sorcerer proceeds undisturbed, leisurely collecting the Dragon Balls on new Namek. Meanwhile, Buu's rehabilitation unfolds smoothly under the skilled care of the Galactic Patrol's certified medium, hypnotist, and aromatherapist, as detailed in Jaco's account in Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 47. Buu's memories are also restored, granting him access to the formidable powers of the Grand Supreme Kai. Armed with divine abilities, Buu easily overwhelms a weaker Moro who never had the chance to absorb Goku and Vegeta's energy. With Moro defeated and Buu joining the Galactic Patrol as a valiant defender of justice, peace 
seems to have returned to the universe. However, Moro's second wish poses a significant threat as it unleashes a horde of dangerous criminals from the Galactic Patrol prison, including the formidable Android 73. Despite lacking unified leadership, the Galactic Patrol, boasted by the addition of Fat Boo, diligently pursues and apprehends each criminal, ensuring the safety of the cosmos once more. Thus, the moral arc concludes with the triumph of justice over chaos. However, without Goku and Vegeta's involvement in the moral arc, they will undoubtedly be less prepared for future challenges. Vegeta would lack access to the spiritual techniques he learned on Yadret, and his lack of spiritual balance would persist. Similarly, Goku's training with mirrors, which allowed him to master Ultra Instinct, would not have occurred, leaving him unable to access the powerful state at will. Now, let's delve into the Granola arc. Without the clash between Goku and Moro on Earth, the heaters who had no opportunity to obtain the data of Android 73, and 73 would have been recaptured by the Galactic Patrol. Consequently, Granola would not embark on the mission to acquire 73 for the heaters. Goku and Vegeta resumed their training under Beerus and Whis, respectively following their usual routine. However, they lag behind their cannon cells due to the lack of involvement in the moral arc. Meanwhile, Granola utilizing the Dragon Balls had become the strongest person in the universe, prompting the heaters to devise a plan, inviting Goku and Vegeta over to a planet under the guise of battling a villain, intending to isolate them and Granola for an ambush. In the ensuing confrontation, Granola overpowers the Saiyans with ease, and the Monaito intervenes and recounts Bardock's heroic actions, prompting Granola to spare the two Saiyans. As expected, the heaters disrupt the proceedings by unleashing Gas, the newly crowned strongest in the universe, to challenge Goku and Vegeta. With Goku and Vegeta weaker than their cannon selves, Granola must pick up the slack instead though Gas was still quite many leagues above Granola in terms of power. Before Granola falls to Gas, Goku employs instant transmission to buy them some time, transporting Gas and himself to a distant planet before returning. With their energy restored by the Namekians, Goku and Vegeta unite once more, with Goku accessing his master Ultra Instinct state for the first time, and Vegeta unleashing Ultra Ego. The initial cooperation between Goku and Vegeta proves fruitful, allowing them to inflict significant damage on gas. However, Goku's racing mind affects his calmness and tranquility, which begins to affect his Ultra Instinct power, causing it to wane in effectiveness. Consequently, Vegeta is forced to confront gas alone, as Goku struggles to maintain his Ultra Instinct form. With Goku unable to assist Vegeta, gas faces off against Ultra Ego Vegeta alone. How will the events of this Granola arc unfold from this pivotal moment onwards, and what awaits in the Dragon Ball Super Superhero arc? Well, these questions will be answered in the next part on Dragon Ball Super.